for allowing us another day of life, another day to draw closer to him, to learn from him, to worship him. And this is Sunday morning, and I have a sermon prepared for you. I've asked uh, God just to speak to me so that I can speak to you, his people, and the flock that uh, he has entrusted to me. Today I'm reading out of the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And the, the title is entitled, uh, it's Direct My Path. Direct My Path. And you know, when we have an important decision to make, or decisions, sometimes we feel like, like we can't trust anyone, not even God. We're afraid that you know he's going to interfere, that maybe what we're hoping for, the decision that we want is is we want it this way. But you know if I if I trust God, if I look to God, he he might have other plans and it's going to mess up my plan. And and you see, God knows what's best for us. You see, he, he's a better judge of what we need and what we want than we are. We we must learn to trust Him completely in every decision that we make. You may have already acknowledged God in many areas of your life, but the areas where you attempt to restrict or ignore him will cause grief in your life. In the areas where we restrict, okay, Lord, just this part of my life, I'm okay here, I, you know, I've got it together here, um, I, I need help there, but I'm okay here. Or we ignore them all together. We, we know that God is wanting us to do something different. We, we, we choose a different path. So when we make him the vital part of our life, of everything that we do, then he will guide you and me because we will be working to accomplish his purpose in our life. So, this is a form of self-denial. We're denying, denying what I want, what I have control over, and it means surrendering your agenda, my agenda, and our personal will to God, because it's for our advantage. Amen? So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how powerful it is when, when we allow God to direct our paths. Lord, we love you, Father. We thank you, God, for the gift of life and the breath of life. Speak to us today through me, God. Use me to deliver this message, Father, so it would edify your people, myself too, included, that our lives would change, God, as we learn to trust in you, to depend on you in every area of our life. Nothing hidden, nothing held back, but everything we empty ourselves onto the altar before you, God, asking you, inviting you to be the King, the Lord of our life. Amen. So imagine what powerful things can happen when Jesus Christ is the King of your life and my life. When he rules, when he's the Lord over your life, when he's the King of your life, he paves your path and gives you direction. So he'll pave the path and then he'll give you direction. Here it is. This is the, the road, the way of life that I'm choosing for you. And this is where you go. This is where you turn. When you come to this, let me lead you. Let me guide you. Let me show you the way. All of a sudden, when we do that, the limits are taken off. The gloves are taken off, so to speak. And he's able to move in your life on your behalf. Maybe that's why King Solomon wrote this in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. He said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, he says, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. He shall make them straight. So this is what it is. This is what it means, this is what it, what it means to be a disciple. It's what it's all about. A disciple of, of, 
God, a disciple of Christ himself. We're his students. He's our, our teacher, the master teacher, the Lord of lords, the king of kings. He knows what's best. He is wisdom. He is knowledge. He is understanding. He is the I am. He was all that before anything else was. So we're going to look at those two verses today, verses 5 and 6 of Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to see what kind of lessons we can learn about allowing God to direct our paths. The first thing is this, we've got to trust him. The main verse says this, trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is telling you and me to place ourselves completely at the feet of Jesus. Here I am, Lord. You are the Lord of my life. I'm entrusting myself. I'm placing myself at your feet at the altar of God himself. Believe in him. Totally. I, I, I know it's, it's like, okay, I, I do. I believe in him. But no, this is, this is totally. This is where everything you trust him with. Be excessive in your trust. It's, it's kind of like being a child that simply trusts their mom or dad. I know that some of us maybe didn't have that relationship with our, our parents or our children. But the right thing, the right way is to be a godly husband, a godly wife, a godly mother, a godly father, a godly son, a godly daughter. That, that, that's what we're talking about here. We're new creatures in Christ now. All that stuff is gone. All that stuff is gone. There's no more excuses. We are children of God immersed in his word. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. We are connected to the Lord spiritually. So now we are to become like a child who simply trusts. Like a child trusts their parents. Children are entirely dependent on their mother and their father. They trust and believe with all they heart that what you say or what that parent says is true. I, I believe it. My dad said it. I believe it. My mom told me that. They told me that it was like this. I believe it. That's what it is. You can say, well, wait a minute, that's kind of gullible. That's naive. No, that's a pure heart that a child has. We as parents can form them and mold them into what we want. And if it's not a godly thing, then we're just destroying that relationship. But we now, as born-again Christians, need to trust God just like a child trusts a parent. He says it, and it's true. And we have to follow Jesus in that same way. When he speaks to us through his word, we need to trust it. We need to obey it. We need to live it. We need to breathe it. We need to walk that way too. Dethrone. Take yourself off that throne. Your understanding and what you think you know. My parents with teenagers, I think you can relate to this. It's frustrating if you have a teenage son or a daughter, and sometimes even older sons and daughters, when they say, I know already. When you've got a word of counsel, I know already. I know that. I heard about it. And so teenagers think they know everything, right? I know I did, and you probably did too. My mom and dad, what would they know? You know, I had teachers, I had you know, uh, high school teachers and professors that you know, were educated. What would they know over my mom and dad? What I didn't factor into that equation is my mother and my father were full of the Holy Spirit of God. And I violated so many things and I paid for it for years until I came to the Lord. But, again, we don't know everything. That's why even as adults, we need to trust in God because we don't have all the answers and the answers we do have of always getting us in trouble. It's only until we're older, more mature, that we realize how much we don't know, how much we didn't know. And the same is true with God. You don't know it all. I don't know it all. Only God knows it all. And we have to learn to trust that. Yes, he gives us wisdom. He gives us understanding to make the right decisions. But they're godly decisions because we always look to him. 
Our hearts are always sensitive to what the Word of God tells us, what His Holy Spirit prompts us to do. Amen? When we told God, I already know, He knows that we don't know. That's why we must not, we cannot, we should not rely on our own understanding, but trust His Word and His wisdom. Have you ever wondered how pilots fly their jets across the country, across the world at night? They don't have headlights. There's no stop signs. There's no flashing red lights that indicate this way out there in the, in the sky, in the heavens. So how do they know where they're going? Well, the fact is this. They don't see where they're going. They have a panel of flight instruments and gauges that tell them where they are, what they need to do in order to get where they need to be. Those gauges are a million times more reliable than a pilot's own sense of direction. Now, I don't know about you, if you've ever flown across the country, maybe other parts of the world on vacations, you know, where, where we go now, flying all over the world, flying, you know, just over mountainous area, over oceans and waters and things like that. But when I fly over these mountains in the dark, I don't know where we are, but I don't want a pilot who's flying this jet, depending on his own sense of direction, who says something like this, I think the mountains are on my left, so I'm going to steer to the right. How far, I don't know, I'm going to have to kind of figure that out as I go. No, I want a pilot, and I'm sure you do too, whose eyes are glued to the instrument panel, because that panel is far more reliable than what he can see or what he can think about. And it's the same thing with trusting God. You don't have to try to figure out every event that has happened in your life. You only have to trust God to do what he has promised to do. Amen? He is the gauge. He is an instrument. He is the one that guides, directs, that turns the earth, the orbit, the stars, everything he controls. How things fly, how things turn and rotate, all those things. He is the creator of all of that. So your own sense of understanding and my sense of understanding are going to get us through life. But trusting God when you don't understand him will. Just like what we're going through this pandemic, this world thing's going on. We don't understand this, but we have to trust that God is going to make a way. He's going to show himself strong that there are going to be some great and amazing thing coming. Because when there's trials and tribulations, when there's world economies that are shuddering and staggering, and the hand of God comes through, that's what happens. That's why he does it, to show that he is still God. And not to lean on our own understanding. Not to trust other things, but look to him. He is still the master planner. He is still the master architect. He designed this. He knows where everything is. How everything works and why. We have to trust that. In the middle of all this stuff. Your own sense of understanding is not going to get us through life. But trusting God when you don't understand will get us through that. The second thing is acknowledge him. The second verse says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all our ways. That means your marriage, or if you're not married, your dating life, your family life, your career, your personal life, your finances, every area of your life. God's input needs to, to play the major role. He's got to be the major role in your life. Everything surrounds a, a, a God. Everything operates and works around God. He is the center of our life. As blood-bought Christians, we understand that. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, if it wasn't for the shed blood on the cross, we wouldn't have salvation. And if he hadn't sent the comfort of his Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have the Spirit of God in us that gives us the power to overcome. That's why we need to give him the major role in our life. That's because leaving God out of one area of your life can lead to destruction of the others. One little piece can affect the whole thing. One little piece can infect the whole thing. 
We've got to be men and women of integrity, complete and whole, surrounded, surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. On a test in school, if you get eight out of the ten answers correct, you'll pass the course. If a salesman closes eight to ten business deals, he's probably going to be an outstanding, successful salesperson. When it comes to trusting God with the areas of your life, eight out of ten isn't good enough. You and I have to acknowledge God in all the areas of our life. We often look at this word acknowledge and we think that it means to recognize or to honor someone. But Jesus, he, Jesus he's not asking to be saluted or applauded. The, the Hebrew word for acknowledge in, in Scripture is yada, which means to know. To know, to know him, to know and to trust him. And the only thing I could think of in my personal life was being a policeman and driving south on Gary Avenue and a car runs a light there in front of you at Grand and goes southbound. You light him up. You come up, the car stops, and you get right behind them. You get out of the driver's side, you look over, and your partner's getting out at the same time. You look over at him, he looks over at you, and you acknowledge each other. Because I know him, and he knows me. I trust him, and he trusts me. That when we walk up on that car and make contact, we know what we're both looking for. What I can see, and what he can't see. What he can see and what I can't see. We trust each other. We know each other. We acknowledge each other. Then we proceed to make contact. So the same thing as this. We're not alone. We acknowledge God. Lord, you're my partner. You're, you're my, my leader, my guide. I look to you. You look to me. I'm, I'm, I'm connected to you, Lord. I trust you. And you look to me as a son or a daughter that needs him. We need each other. We need each other. I need him for my salvation. I need him for my relationships with my, my family, with my wife and my children. I need him more than he needs me. But I know him and he knows me. The same as my partner and I. We know each other. We've worked. We've gone through some things together, a lot of things together. But God is my creator. He's my savior. He formed me in my mother's womb before I was even named. He knows me, he's known me that long. He saw me way before I was even a, 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 a sparkle in my mother's and I's eye. He knows me and I know him. When you acknowledge God, you know that he's there with you personally. You can trust him. You know that you're not alone. It all comes down to decisions. In all your decisions, you need to acknowledge God and trust him to play the role in that decision that he wants to play. That decision you're going to make, let him play the role in that decision. If not, if God's not in it, God's not at all. I said, if he's not the Lord of your life at all, the Lord of your life, then he's not the Lord at all. You understand that? It, 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 help, let him make those decisions. Don't push him out of the way. We're in for heartache if we do that. So making a decision the way God wants you to is a way of trusting God. Amen? It says, God, this is, is not a nat my natural inclination. I, you know, I, I, I was taught to bring myself up by my bootstraps. I'm a, I'm a self-made man. You know, I found my way. I know how to do this. I've gone to school. I've studied these kind of things. I've done those kind of things. But, but, Get, you know, letting you have your way in my life is not my natural inclination. It's, it's not an easy choice, but it's, it's right. It's what you want, and I will do it your way. It's not a natural thing. Because our carnal, our fleshly way, our, our own way wants to get the way. I, I can do this. I can do this. For remember we said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? It's Christ. 
The third thing is this, follow him and he shall direct your paths. The word direct in this verse means to make smooth or straight. This means that God doesn't just guide our steps. He makes sure that our path is smooth and it's straight, right? He makes that path straight. It's, it's been graded, it's been you know, leveled, and we're good to go. Some folks look at the future, but they don't see a straight path. This means that, that God doesn't just guide our steps. He makes sure that our path is smooth and he makes it straight, right? And, but they, what they see is a steep, rocky, winding road, which is cluttered with the broken pieces of the past. That's what they see. Man, my life has been like this, and there's this and that happened in my life, and this and that life that's going on. That's all they see, is all the junk that's left because of the way it was before. They can't get past that. For others, a journey into the future isn't like walking in sunshine. It's like stumbling through fog. You know those nights when you're driving home and it's foggy and uh, you, you've had to work late and your, 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 your lights are on, and they, but the fog is, and you're, you're, you're trying to find out where you're going, you hit the highlights and it just makes it worse. That's how they, just, they can't see further. Then it just went 15, 20 feet ahead of their car. And for some, maybe it includes you, the future doesn't seem bright. It seems cold, dark, and dreary, especially during these times. All these families, friends, relatives that, that are passing because of the sickness, it's like, oh my God, I, I, I can't, I, how did that happen? And you, and you withdraw and you stay home and you, you just start fretting and worrying about things. And it's during these times, these hard times, these difficult times, when things don't look so good, this is the time to trust in God. So if your future seems uncertain, he can handle it with certainty. He will make your path straight. This verse isn't saying that, that he's going to make your life easy. It means that he'll make your life focused. He'll give you a direction and a purpose in life. God makes your path straight by giving you a sense of identity. As a follower of Christ, as a child of God, we have the capacity to understand who we are more so than other people, because the roles that we are to play have been defined for us. God has made a way for us. He has a plan for us. A plan of an, an abundant life, not, a, not a, a life to ruin us. We don't just see ourselves in terms of what we do for a living. We see ourselves in terms of what God is accomplishing through us. Trusting God means that we don't have to try to make sense of all the areas of our life. He will make them. He will make them make sense for you. So if you're not sure where you're going, if you're unsure of the future, this, again, is the time to trust God. If we keep falling, we're doing it wrong. But if we trust in Him, He's going to keep us from falling and protect you and me from permanent mistakes. Things that we're going to, you know, just regret for the rest of our life. Unchangeable things. If we don't trust God. Again, following Jesus Christ is about getting off my throne. Getting off your throne. And enthroning him. Take yourself off the throne. Put him up there. It's you, God. You first. Not me. Here's my final thoughts. My son Vinny went on his first skydiving trip in Arizona about 15 years ago, I think, something like that. Coop, I can't even, Cooper or something like that, Arizona. He went out, I don't know, some other up in Arizona. I don't know what he was thinking. So as he got all suited up, got in the plane, he's gonna jump, he asked the instructor, can I trust this parachute to open? The instructor said, there's only one way to find out. And he obviously he did. He's still with us. It's the same thing with trusting God. There's only one way to find out if it works. you got to jump first. It's a leap of faith. Not a blind leap. 
because thousands and thousands before us have trusted in God for their salvation and he has never failed anyone. But it's a leap nonetheless. They've done it. There's so many witnesses, like the Bible says, this cloud of witnesses stands before us. There are so many others that have gone before us that have given their life to the Lord, surrendered their life, been baptized in Jesus' name, have their sins washed away because they repented and they gave their life to the Lord. Amen? They surrendered their will. They repented from the way they were living. They turned around and God changed them. They're a new creation in Christ now. All that old stuff has been washed away. You know, many Christians are, are in denial about self-denial. They want God but they don't want to let God get, let control. They don't want to let go of control. Okay, God, yeah, I, I trust in you, I believe in you, but, but you know, I, I, I gotta take care of this stuff. They wanna be their own spiritual boss. Listen to their own feelings and understanding. Conveniently mixing Jesus into their lives. Okay, a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll give a little bit there, I'll give a little bit here, so you're, you're playing with God. You're a double-minded person. You have no place with God because he isn't your God. God can only be one, one dimensional. He, he, he's it. You can't have him a little bit here and then not have him there and just and play, play the odds, play the fence. No, God doesn't want lukewarm. He'll spit you out. See, every time we call, we tell God that this or that is off limits or I'll do what I want anyway, we dethrone him from our hearts, we dethrone him. The question is this, are you in denial about self-denial? If so, it's time to humble yourself and uncrown your self-control. Following Jesus means saying no to self and yes to him. Yes, Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the king of my life. I want to take these steps, God, to surrender my will to you. I want to know you. I want to acknowledge you in all my ways. I want to trust you, Father, and not trust myself. I want you to make my path straight, God. I want you to lead me down the righteous path for salvation, my salvation, my family's salvation. Amen. Lord, we thank you, God, today for this message. I pray that it was edifying. I know it was for me, God. I need to be constantly reminded of who you are in my life. Not just when you are, but always, God, who you are in my life. I want to be a man of integrity. I want to be solely sold out to you, Father. I want to trust you in everything in my life. Help me to take my, myself out of the way and have you Lord, guide and direct and lead my paths, Father, unto righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you.